Okay, college algebra. Section or chapter two, section one. The distance and midpoint formulas. First of all, let's take a look at these things that we know, hopefully, about this system. What is it called? Well, one name is the Cartesian coordinate system. Another name is the rectangular coordinate system. Uh, it's also called the XY axis. It's also called the XY plane. Um, what are the independent variables? That's the horizontal or in most cases the x-axis. The dependent is the vertical or usually the y-axis, although you can name those anything different. Also x way back in the old textbooks called the abscissa. This is S-C-I. And the y is the ordinate probably don't hear those much anymore. There are quadrants. It's divided into four of them. Start counting counterclockwise. goes from positive, positive to is negative, positive. Three is negative, negative. And four is positive, negative. Okay. So uh, this is center is called the origin. Um, I think that's all we need to try to remember about this because we're going to use distance not on the number line, which we already know. What is distance on the number line? Let's say from A to B. This distance we'll call D. And how do we find distance on the number line? Well, you could do B minus A. But you could also do a minus b just so that you take the absolute value because distance doesn't care about direction. But that's on the number line. Now we're going to find the midpoint and the distance in the plane, the xy plane, the Cartesian coordinate system, the rectangular coordinate system. That is objective one. Oops using the distance formula. Well, the distance formula really comes from Pythagoras. If this is the point x sub 1, y sub 1, and this is the point x sub 2, y sub 2, and the distance between the two points is D, then what we do is make a right triangle. This distance is really X sub 2 minus X sub 1. This distance is really Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1. But remember, for distance, we don't really care. And that also means that uh, we should be able to do this. We could do it with absolute value. But what we're going to do is um, figure this out using the one of the other definitions for absolute value. d squared is equal to x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared. So when we square this, we don't care if it's x sub 1 minus x sub 2 or x sub 2 minus x sub 1. But whatever we choose, we better keep the order the same. If this is 2 and 1, then we want y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. But it doesn't matter which way we label it, just so we're consistent. That means the distance, this also assumes, because we'll be given this square root in the formula, that this is always a positive number. x sub 2 minus x sub 1, when you square that it's positive. y sub 2 minus y sub 1, when you square that it's positive. And the square root, take the uh, principal square root, and that is positive. 
So that's how you figure out the distance in a plane. Suppose you have two points. Pick a point. One, two, and say negative three, four. So the distance would be, now I'm going to call this the x sub 1 and x sub 2, or y sub 1 stuff, and the x sub 2 and the y sub 2 stuff. So it's the square root of negative 3 minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared. So that's the square root of... This is a negative 4 squared is 16, plus, this is 4 minus 2, which is 2 squared, which is 4, and we get the square root of 20. Now, to reduce this, 20, if you find the factorizations, 2 times 10, which is 2 times 5, we can pull out a 2 and leave the 5 behind, 2 times the square root of 5. So, if you're asked to reduce it, Make sure you, or simplify it, make sure you pull out all your perfect squares whenever you can. That is objective one. What is objective two? Use the midpoint formula. So, the midpoint formula. Um, if we have a point x sub 1 and y sub 1, and another point x sub 2 and y sub 2, there's a point right in the middle. The midpoint, we'll call it capital M. Maybe these are points A and B. And it's halfway between. Well, how do you find that halfway between? You find the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So, the midpoint formula, they write that as an ordered pair. Take x sub 1 plus x sub 2 and divide it by 2. Take y sub 1 and y sub 2 and divide it by 2. And you found the midpoint. So let's use those points I had before. Let's see, point A would be the 1, 2, and B, I said it was negative 3, 4. Just pick any two points. So it's the x sub 1, 1. Uh, x sub 2 is minus 3, because it's plus a negative, over 2. And y sub 1, which is 2, y sub 2 is 4 over 2. We get, let's see, this is a negative 2 over 2 which is a negative 1, and this is 6 over 2, which is 3. Does that make sense? Um, let's see if I can fit these in here. 1, 2, and negative 3, 4 is really in the first and second quadrant. 1, 2, negative 3, and 4. And I say the midpoint is a negative 1, 3. Yep, looks like it works. So, that's all there is in this section. Let's go through a few examples. In your textbook, page 161, uh, let's look at number 12. It says plot each point, tell which quadrant it's in, um, or on which coordinate axis the point lies. So I'm not going to do all of these. I'm just going to do part A with this. The point is 1, 4. That's point A. So let's graph that. That's pretty easy, I hope. Most of this will be, but remember, it's a good thing they asked six questions here because then you'll have the four steps. One, four. Just to make sure you know how to do that. This is one, four, point A. 
Um, it is in quadrant one. What about number 26? For this, um, find the distance between the two points. P1 is 1.2 and 2.3. P2 is negative 0.3 and 1.1. So the distance is the square root of x sub 2. I'm going to go bottom to top, just the, with the basis here, 2 and 1. Negative 0.3 minus x sub 1, 1 1.2 squared plus, continue this, y sub 2 is the 1.1 minus the 2.3 squared. Now I've got the three steps here. I'm going to pull up my calculator for the fourth step. And I've got an old TI-83 plus, but that's okay. It works the same. Turn this thing on. Let's clear off that old garbage on the screen. We're going to do the square root of, and I've got a parenthesis there, but I'm going to, I've got to begin and end the parenthesis for the square root. So I need to start my next parenthesis, negative 0.3 minus 1.2, close the parenthesis, square it, plus start the second part, 1.1 minus 2.3, can't see it underneath there, but I know what it is. Close the parentheses, square it, and then close the square root. Oops, don't do it twice though. Okay, then when you press enter, it should have the answer for it. 1.92, now it says here, it doesn't say here, how far to round that. I will probably have to tell you, round it to the nearest hundredth or something like that. So this is one, sorry, I gotta move that back up again. My gosh, I always make that mistake. Let's see here. Okay, 1.92. to the nearest hundredth. So, that shouldn't be too bad. You can use your calculator for some of those. Don't use it indiscriminately. <clears throat> those numbers were a little harder to square than the normal numbers. Try to do it in your head if you can and check yourself. How about number 32? This says plot each point and form the triangle ABC, verify that it is a right triangle, and then find its area. So we've got point A, which is negative 6, 3. Point B, 3, negative 5. And point C, negative 1, 5. So, here's where we plot them. And you can use graph paper if you want, but I think it's not necessary. Negative 6, 3. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3. Someplace right here is point A. 3, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, someplace right here. That's point B. C is negative 1, 5. 3, 4, 5. So they're saying this is a right triangle. If it is, then these two should make the right angle. Now, um, how do you verify 
that that's a right triangle? Well, you can do it by figuring out the length of each side and then using the Pythagorean theorem, the converse. Uh, we could look at the slope. This is point C. What is the slope of AC? The slope of AC, let's see, we can do that with 5 minus 3 over negative 1 minus negative 6. So that's plus 6. So this is 2 over 5. And what is the slope of BC? Let's see, B is negative 5 minus 5 over 3 minus a negative 1, or 3 plus 1. So we get a negative 10 over 4. Reduce that to a negative 5 halves. Oh, they're opposite reciprocals. These must be perpendicular. These then, is, that's where the right angle is. So here's the BC. So we know it's a right triangle. Um, find its area. Well, for a right triangle, we'll call this the base, the AC, and the BC then would be the height. So the length of AC, how do you find the length? Let's see, the distance from A to C is the square root of A to C. It's negative 6 minus 1, which is a negative 5 because it's really plus 1 squared. And then it's 3 minus 5, so it's a negative 2 squared which is 25 plus 4, or 29. That's the base. The height is the distance for BC, which is, see, BC is 3 minus a negative 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. And a negative 5 minus 5, so that's a negative 10. So you get the square root of, this is 16 and 100, so it's 116. And the area is 1 half the base times the height. So it's 1 half square root of 29 times the square root of 116. I don't know if think that comes out nice at all. But let me pull up my calculator again and see what's uh, 29 times 6, or 116. If that comes out to a nice square, I'd be surprised. We'll take the square root of that. And you can always grab the last calculation by going to this answer here and then finding it. Oh, it is. Is that amazing? So when we multiply these together and take the square root, we get 58. So I can put that back down. Interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that. So this is really 1 half times 58. And half of 58 is 25, and or half of 50 is 25, and 8 is 4. So this is 29. Hmm. So the distance, I'm sorry, the area is 29 square whatever units they are. We need to find the midpoint of something. So we'll do number 42. Find the midpoint of the line segment. P1 is 1.2 and 2.3. P2, negative 0.3 and 1.1. The midpoint 
is add the x's, 1.2 plus the negative 0.3, divide by 2. The y is the 2.3 and the 1.1 divided by 2. Let's see if we can do these in our head. So subtracting 0.3, this is like 12 minus 3, so it's really 8, right? Or 0.8, I'm sorry, 0.9. So this is 0.9 over 2. And this is 3.4 over 2. So I guess we can take half of 0.9 and get 0.45. Half of 3.2 and get 1.7. That should be the midpoint. And we've got four steps. That's what I'm trying to show you primarily. You can get four steps out of all this stuff. So you should be able to do the problems. Uh, using midpoint, distance, and uh, that should be sort of fun problems to do also. Chapter 2, Section 1, done.